Hi, we are the board. We chose the game project as our final project for ENG6. My name is Rodolfo Rodriguez. My name is Ender D. And my name is Keshe from Mamkuma. And this is our game. This is RPG chess. You role play as the future and the past. We implemented a, a couple new features like chess and flags that you have to capture. We'll go ahead and demonstrate those now. So black goes first. Here we go. When you, when you capture a chest, you get a random piece generated that you become. And then we're going to go ahead and pull out the king to play. The objective is to capture the opponent's flag. As you can see here, future wins. And you get an audio. I'm going to go ahead and hand it off to Kishav for the MATLAB GUI. Yeah, so uh, <clears throat> we, uh, don't, we haven't written the entire code. So this is, uh, we adapted this from uh, someone called Suleiman and he, we've accredited him, accredited him at the bottom. So this part of the code is just the initialization of the GUI. And this just talks, uh, talks about all the different buttons that we use, uh, different boxes. And uh, this entire section, it just assigns the different variables with the different images in the directory given. And down here, you can see how all the images are being cropped up too. So they all uh, set to the size 60 by 60. And so this is the main array that we're using. And uh, here is the where the item RNG generated by Rodolfo will come to play. So here we just use this uh, array and add uh, Rodolfo's item RNG to it. So when you run the code, uh, you can see how the all the ones are where the pawns are, the two is the rook, three is the knight, and so on. And so each number on this determines where what piece is. And so after this, uh, yeah, this section, it just, uh, if the number on the array is one or two or whatever, it just assigns it to the respective piece. So if it's a one, it's gonna be a pawn. If it's a two, it's gonna be a rook, uh, three is a knight and whatever, and so on. And so if you go down here, we also implemented the chest and the flags too. So uh, a flag will be a number six uh, for the black side and number my, and the minus six for the red side and number seven for the chest and the black and minus seven for the chest and the red side. And so after this, uh, this is just like a function to exit the game. And this one just tells you whose turn it is. And uh, these callbacks are just for the different buttons on the chessboard. So you can click on a button and click on another button to move the piece to that side. And whenever you click on the button, this callback is going to be made. And uh, one second, yeah, okay, finally, we also added these two. Uh, so when you run the code, you can see it says instructions and load. And if you click on instructions, it's gonna give you like a small rundown of how to play the game and what the rules are. And uh, if you click on low, you're gonna get like a small uh, backstory to what's happening. So moving on to the which piece uh, function. So what which piece does is, it so if the, it assigns the variable player piece, if, um, checks if the variable player piece, which is the piece that's being clicked on, uh, is a white pawn. So if it's a white pawn, the player mark is gonna be one. If it's a black pawn, it's gonna be, if it's gonna be a minus one if it's a white pawn and a, a positive one if it's a black pawn and so on. So it just assigns a player mark to different, uh, it just assigns a player mark to different numbers, which will later be used in the check FP function. And rec mark, it just works on uh, setting the different backgrounds for the pieces. So some pieces have a purple background and some pieces have a white background. This was done so we don't interfere with the alternating nature of the board. And so check FP, uh, yeah, this function controls the main movement of the pieces. And so pawns can only move up and down and to kill, uh, to only move up and down based on uh, what side they're on. And they can only move diagonally to kill. And so uh, how we edited this was, uh, I had to uh, make it so that the pawns couldn't collect the flag. So you can say the not equal is six, that means it can't collect the flag. And uh, we had to also make it so that the pawn could only collect the chest. So only pawns are, can collect the position where the player mark is seven. And if that happens, the piece RNG is called, which Rodolfo will go over later. And the pawn is converted to whatever piece RNG is generated. And this is done for every single piece on the board. So like uh, rooks, bishops, knights, and so on. And, and none of the pieces can touch the flag except the king, which is a can. And uh, then we have player turn. Okay, and in player turn, uh, initially you just um, call on the, we import the audio that we used for like if the future or the past wins. And uh, we just have like different directories for both of them. And then we check if the player is making a valid move and they're trying to move only their pieces and not the opponents. 
And after this, uh, here it just calls the check FP function to check if it's a valid move. If it's valid, it gets check equal to one. And uh, yeah, it's just a repeat for uh, both the pieces. If the check equal to one, it updates the array initially and moves the pieces. And after this, uh, finally, it calls a, lose, a who loses function, which should also go over in a bit. And um, if one side loses, the other side is declared the winner. And uh, the music's also played. And there's a message that says the future or the past wins, respectively. And now Rodolfo is going to go over the who loses part of the code. All right. For the who loses, uh, we see here it checks the whole board, one columns one through eight and rows one through eight, uh, to see if the flags still exist for the each side. If they do exist and both of these are true, then loser is equal to zero. That means nobody has won or lost yet. But if one of these is false, then it moves on to the other one. And if this one is false as well, then the loser is whichever player was playing. Uh, this was also an original function by Solomon that I had to edit for the flags, but I also had to add another function similar to the previous to check if the king has been killed as well. So if their king has not been killed and the flag still exists, then they don't lose. But if both of those, if one of those is false, then the loser is the player. And I'm going to go over the item RNG. Here I made an array, which is half the size of the uh, eight by eight chessboard. This is a four by eight for rows, eight columns. Uh, here I have a while loop that generates a random assortment of positions for the chess. It gives you a, col a column and a row, and then it places it on the position array, which is this one. Uh, here I flip it horizontally and vertically so that it is mirrored onto the other side. That way there is no uh, issues with fairness. It is going to be the same. It's going to be in the same position. Uh, here I concatenate the position array with the holder array here. Piece RNG, gener I generate an array that is one by 100, which has 20 of each piece type, one through five. Uh, this is pawn, rook, king, queen, uh, queen. So we, here we choose a random piece from the piece array. That way each of them has a 20% chance uh, to be generated and then it outputs it to random piece. I'm gonna hand it over to Ender to do the sent and receive and clear things being functions. The send and receive is pretty straightforward because things we cannot uh, we receive a data with multiple like array and column and rows. So I separate each row and turn it to a string and then I could store it in one piece. And here we change the uh, array into a string. And then also I up, we upload the pair turn in the sent. And then we see if we just turn that string to back to number. And then you see here, our array, we just reconstructing the row back to uh, the whole array with a time a array. And also we received the player turn and then the game could update who's turn is it in the online page. And after that, in initialization, we have a clear thing speak to avoid any uh, data from previous game. We just did it the whole channel, all data on the channel. So yeah. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and present a, de a demo of the ThinkSpeak multiplayer function because we weren't able to implement it into our code. Go ahead and open that now here. If we run it, you see we have the array of the chessboard right here. Uh, we're sending it along with the player turn, and then we should receive it here through the holders. As you can see here, we got the holder one and the player mark. Um, that is it for our presentation. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Thank you. All right.